Hi folks, in this video we continue our discussion of formal proofs with quantifiers. You've already learned the two easy rules, how to do universal elimination and existential intro. So now we're gonna start talking about the harder rules. And in this video, we're gonna look at universal introduction. Remember, intro rules are about how you introduce that symbol, how you prove a sentence with that symbol as the new main connective. Like if we wanted to prove the sentence for all x, p of x, how would we do that? Imagine to yourself, what would you have to do up here? Well, if we only had a finite domain of objects, like let's say there's only three things in our domain, a, b, and c, if we could prove that a has property p and b has property p and c has property p, then that would be proving that everything has property p. But that that doesn't work though in, in general, because for one thing, you might not know how many objects in your domain, so you don't know how many of those you know, objects you have to prove have property P, but even furthermore, we can have infinite domains. What if our domain is the natural numbers, like zero, one, two, three, et cetera? You can't prove for all of them that they have some property, like proving that every one of those is a number, because there's an infinite number of them. It would never stop. You could never complete the task. So we need a totally different method in order to do this. You might think it's impossible to prove that an infinite number of things has a property, but there is a solution. And this is what the foundation of all of mathematics is built on, in fact. Because uh, what we need to do is we need to talk about arbitrary objects. So we're gonna have a new device. Since these are the annoying rules, we're already gonna have this thing with a subproof. You probably were expecting that. But there's a new thing we're gonna do too. And this is called boxing a constant. And what we do is we assume that we're gonna use the name A for some totally arbitrary object in the domain. We don't know which one it is. It's just a random one. And if we can prove that object A has property P without assuming anything about A whatsoever, then that does mean that everything has to have property P because A was arbitrary. We didn't assume that, for example, that A was the number two or that A was the number seven. We just assumed that A was some object in the domain or other. And that's what this convention of putting these square braces around the name does. So when we do this, it's, we're gonna call it boxing a constant for A. And what you have to prove is that A has some formula or other true of it, like property P. And then the way the rule works is, if A was arbitrary, the thing that you're boxed here is what you then get to convert to some variable and put a universal quantifier on for it. So since A was here, when I put the X there, I'm allowed to put a universal quantifier on front. And when you do this, you get to choose whatever variable you want. So this could be Y as well, or this could be Z, as long as that variable does not already occur in this formula P or in whatever complex formula that you had on line N. Now, something else is important because you know that the name A might be used for Alberto or Alice. So there's a further convention, which is the name A is not allowed to appear anywhere outside the subproof. Because if we also knew like that Alberto is happy, and then we just reiterated that down here, that wouldn't prove that all objects are happy because we were using special information about Alberto outside of our proof. So in order for the name to be arbitrary, the name A cannot appear anywhere outside of this subproof. And that's actually the only restriction that we need. And notice also this formula, this, this method, this rule doesn't work just, just work for you know, single properties like property P. This can be any complex formula, like A has property P and it has property Q and it has property R. However complex this is, that structure is gonna determine exactly what goes here. So if, you, if your goal is some complex sentence down here, you need to prove that complex sentence up here with the name A inserted for the variable that you're looking for, like the variable X. Okay, let's see an example about what this looks like in practice, because just talking about it in the abstract can be difficult. Here's a new goal. Why don't you pause your videos and see if you can complete this proof using that plan that we've talked about, the, the universal introduction. Okay, that was your plan. That was your chance to pause your videos. In order to prove a universal claim, this is what's nice about universal conclusions. You always use the same method. It's kind of like whenever you prove an arrow, we told you, if this arrow were wide scope, we'd say assume the antecedent. But look what's wide scope, this quantifier. So whenever you have that, we're gonna box a constant and then we're gonna try to prove something about it. And what goes on this last line right here is, is always known to you in advance. In fact, whenever you're doing one of these proofs, I suggest writing this out now so that you can tell where you're going for because I'm just trying to get this formula down here with A's in place of the X's. Because if I do that, then it meets the structure of my universal intro rule. Okay, now what follows next? Well, look, 
there's no information here. Boxing the constant does not give you a formula to work with. You don't have any formula facts you know about A because A is arbitrary. But look at your conclusion now. This does have a main connective and it's an arrow and you always know what to do with arrows. Let's assume the antecedents. And now all we have to do is prove the consequence. So now we have a subproof inside a subproof. Now, once you get that far, you can hopefully see it's easy to get to P or Q about A because that's just a disjunction intro. So now we're finally starting to make some inferences. Now we can do uh, arrow intro because we've got the structure. We've assumed the antecedent and gotten to the consequence. Now look what we did. We assumed A was arbitrary and we could yet prove that this formula is true of it. That is the structure for the universal intro rule. We get to insert X for all of those A's and stick a universal quantifier on front. And we just justify that by citing the whole subproof one through four. Okay, thanks.